What's up guys, it's Cody here. Today we are in 17W16B, the latest 1.12 snapshot, and I'm gonna be revisiting an old contraption of mine. But first, I have something to show you. In previous versions of Minecraft, command blocks were scheduled to run each tick, but as of 17W16B, chain command blocks are no longer scheduled, with the game instead calculating which command blocks to run on the go. This is a bit of a hard concept to explain and probably won't make much sense if you aren't already familiar with how command blocks were handled before. So I highly recommend you go watch Sliced Lime's tutorial video, which I will link in the description and end screen to find out more about that stuff. To summarize, what this means is that now chains of command blocks can alter themselves while they're running, which can lead to some very interesting behavior. For example, just here, we have a very simple setup of two command blocks. The one on the bottom simply deactivates itself when it's activated, and the one on the top clones itself one block upward. Due to the new command block handling in the snapshot, this command block will run, this one, then check if there is a command block in the direction it's facing. And when the command block does this check, it finds itself, since it's cloned itself upward by one block, putting it in the exact spot it was pointing to a moment ago. And since a command block is found, it is then activated, cloning itself upward, and then reactivating itself once again. And this process repeats until the chain command block hits the very top of the world, and it all takes place in the space of one tick. Using this trick, we can create infinitely looping command block chains. If you've been around for a while, you may remember a video I made with Sparks about infinitely looping commands. In the video, I showed an example of chickens creating a particle beam visible only to the chicken's owner. The problem with that version was that it wasn't truly infinite. Each loop was its own line of commands cloned into place beforehand, meaning it would take up a lot of space and it took time to get the correct loop count. Here is my new looping system. It always stays the same size no matter how many loops there are, and it will always loop exactly the right number of times. But before I show you the commands, let me briefly explain what the purpose of this contraption is. Here we have three players, each with three items on the ground nearby. I want to teleport each player's items directly in front of them all in one tick. So the first thing I did was give each player an ID, as you can see above their head, in the form of a scoreboard value. Then I gave each of the item the ID of its owner, as you can see here. In order to know which player owns what items, each player subtracts their own ID score from the IDs of the items on the ground. Player one would subtract one from the item IDs, meaning the items that now have an ID of zero belong to player one. The same applies to players two and three, with them subtracting two or three, respectively, from the item IDs. This has to be done by only one player at a time. If all players simultaneously subtract their own ID from the item IDs, then none of the items will have an ID of zero, and players won't know which items belong to them. That is where this loop comes in. One by one, each player subtracts their own ID from the item IDs, teleports the items with an ID of zero in front of them, and adds their own ID back to the item IDs to reset them. Then the loop repeats over and over until every player has teleported their items directly in front of them. Then the loop is cut off so it can't continue running. It is very important when looping commands to make sure your loop will exit, otherwise the game may force the loop to exit and it could break your contraption. But how does the loop itself work? First, it gives all the armor stands a loop tag. Then for the first command in the loop, this one here, it selects one loop tagged entity and gives it a loop current tag. Next, the loop current tagged entity executes some commands, in this case subtracting its ID from items, teleporting the items with an ID of zero to itself and adding its own ID back to the items. Then the loop and loop current tags are removed from the entity. After that, this blank command block here is faced away from the next command block which contains the clone command to reset the loop. 
The blank command block is only pointed back towards the clone command block if more loop tagged entities are found. So there are more entities to run the loop on. Then there's the clone command, which simply clones the loop here exactly where it currently is, forcing the clone so the command blocks reset. The reason this is important is because these command blocks have already been run in this tick, so they won't run again. However, if they're replaced, they will run again, because as far as the game is concerned, these newly cloned in command blocks haven't been run yet. Then the start of the loop is activated once again after the clone command finishes, because like with the trick I showed you at the start of this video, the clone command block activates the block in front of itself after it runs its command, and thus the chain of commands loops, and it continues to loop until all of the items are in front of their owners. That's all for now though guys, so thank you very much for watching. You can download the map through the link in the description, so have fun with it and I hope you learned something. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more command block concepts and contraptions, and I'll see you next time.